For the past 10 years, Tioman locals have been replanting their damaged coral reefs. Sangat bangga bila melihat semua coral yang saya tanam dan rakan-rakan tumbuh dengan membesar, sehat dan cantik. We have seen marine life come back in a lot of our nursery sites. We've seen sharks, schools of snappers, turtles. But the team's work is under threat from development. I'm concerned of some beaches. They are now leasing out the land to people who are not local. Some people are just looking for the profit of it. The big problem is people kind of have this idea where, oh, it's okay if we are going to reclaim this land. We can just plant a new reef. It doesn't work like that. Since 2010, NGO Reef Check have been running a coral rehabilitation program on Tioman Island. Hari ini saya akan menanam coral bersama rakan-rakan dengan membawa blok kaca dari darat dan kami akan mencari anak-anak coral untuk tanam pada kaca. In 2014, the Asian Development Bank stated that more than 85% of Malaysia's coral reefs are threatened. So reefs that have been damaged, uh, we've identified the damage, the cause of damage has been removed. So now we are trying to replant the reef and help it recover more quickly. Using recycled materials to create a frame, fragments of live coral are attached. Thanks to their efforts, Tioman now has one of the healthiest reefs on Malaysia's east coast, with over 60% live coral cover. The national average is less than 50%. Not only are coral reefs important as a nursery for marine life, they also provide coastal protection, income from tourism, and food security from the fisheries industry. The value of tourism alone for Tioman Island is estimated to be 3.4 billion ringgit every year. Reef rehabilitation is definitely not a silver bullet. It's not going to solve the problems, but it is one in the arsenal of things that you can do. It is extremely effective for certain local impacts, things like when there's a boat grounding, when there's an anchor damage, when there's a big storm. But uh, it will not be that one solution that's going to be able to save all the reefs around the world. One of the ongoing threats to coral reefs is development. Pada pengalaman saya, 15 tahun saya kerja di Tioman, uh, memanglah ada tempat yang mengalami kerosakan sedikit kerana ialah kemajuan. Jadi tempat yang kurang pembangunan ataupun tiada pembangunan memang uh, halti apa kesihatan uh, terumbu kat situ memang terbaiklah. Uh, contoh macam di belakang pulau semua tempat-tempat apa teluk-teluk yang tak ada penghuni, tak ada pembangunan, uh, dekat situ memang cantiklah. Memang perlukan ada kawalan untuk pembangunan sebab dia boleh mengakibatkan kerosakan pada terumbu karang. Tapi pada pendapat saya kemajuan-kemajuan tu semua masih terkawal. Recently, the government cancelled plans for a new airport on the island. Although this is a victory for locals who protested, this is the second time the project has been cancelled. Now we have an airport which is very small and it can only take maybe until a 40-seater. They want a bigger airport because they want mass tourism. There are these older generation who say, oh, just build it, you know. But my generation mostly understand and aware that the, the effect of this new airport, you know. You might have boost 500% of tourists coming a day to Tioman, but you want to show the coral, but it's not there. If you look at Thailand, Philippines, some of the islands, they have to shut down because they have mass tourism and they didn't look at all the side effects of tourism, you know. So we are learning also from that. There are another plan of just extending the existing runway. So that's actually a better plan than rebuilding it on the sea. Let's see how, oh, there's an eagle. Aside from development, there are other threats to coral reefs, such as rising sea temperatures, damage from tourism, and plastic waste. One of the most lethal types of plastic waste are discarded trawler nets, also known as ghost nets. Last year, we removed about 36 nets, the year before 32. This year, one net I removed had nine sharks stuck on it. So I would say these small efforts at least maintain the reefs in the condition that they are in. Despite the threats, 
The reef rehabilitation has been working thanks to strong community engagement. At this island before, they're still practicing uh, feeding the fish and throw rubbish into the river where the river is flowing into the sea. Under the Griffin program, we are encouraged and also educating uh, our students about how the importance of uh, taking care of our coral especially. And also uh, while we're diving, we pick up uh, rubbish and also reporting any big stuff like a ghost net. Local hotels and restaurants also get involved in conservation through the simple act of recycling. Some volunteers, like Ben, also get involved in upcycling. The mean machine, the glass crusher. This marvelous machine is, yeah, we've had it like for five years, but this is great because we managed to reduce the amount of glass pollution we normally had before. And we've turned the glass into really fine sand and we use it for construction. The glass is also used to make coral pot. Coral pot is actually a mixture of this glass when it's shredded into small fine sand. We mix it with some cement and water and then we put some bottles which is not crushed as a housing for the reef when they want to grow from the small particle reef that we have, you know. It's a nice feeling for us. We're happy that we can contribute in this way, in the simple act of life. Walaupun saya ada kerja lain, dan saya mengambil untuk jadi TMC ini um, hanya sekadar part time. Saya sedar, tapi pentingnya uh, untuk saya jaga semua tu dan memberi contoh pada anak muda yang ingin mengenali tentang pentingnya terumbu karang. Pada umur 8 tahun, saya kena riset sebab dianjurkan program dengan sekolah tentang uh, terumbu karang, kehidupan laut. Bapa saya seorang pemandu pelancong dan ibu saya mempunyai kedai makan. Jadi pelancong dari luar-luar negara datang ke Tioman untuk melihat keindahan uh, batu karang yang ada di Pulau Tioman. Saya sebagai seorang anak muda, saya perlu dan wajib untuk menjaga kehidupan karang kerana itulah sumber pencarian ibu bapa saya dan juga orang kampung di sini. A lot of people come to the island and they always ask me, oh, like, where's your base? Oh, you've got such a small office. But for us, that's like the bottom of the priority. We're investing in people. We've done trainings for over 350 islanders. Recently, I had to go to Trangano to do some reef mapping for the state government. And then he was one of those who came along, you know. So it's quite impressive because it's unheard of in other places in Malaysia of islanders from an island doing this kind of work, which is normally reserved for uh, marine scientists or experts or outsiders, you know. So for me, I think we are moving towards that right path of reef check no longer being needed here and the islanders being able to continue to care for the island by themselves and protect it and run with the program. In terms of the sustainable tourism also, I'm concerned of some beaches they are now leasing out the land to people who are not local. Some people are just looking for the profit of it. This dynamic is changing slowly, slowly, and I, the concern is that in ABC especially, we are still lucky, like most of the chalet operator dive center are local, and we know the value of keeping this beauty. We are looking for like a sustainable tourism so that the family can stay here forever. Everybody can enjoy the beauty that we have forever, you know. <laughs>